Hello and welcome to a quick guide Final Cut Express video tutorial. Hopefully you've had the opportunity to explore Final Cut in one or perhaps more than one video project in your classroom and now you're at the stage where you're asking that question can I do this or can I do that? What I'm going to show you in this video tutorial is how you can play around with motion, the motion of some of the images in your video project that can be applied both to still images and also in moving pictures as well video clips or footage. The following procedure we're only going to play around with the scale or size of the image and we're going to animate it so it moves but this procedure can be applied to both rotation and the positioning of the image on the screen. So looking at this current project we have a video project which has image after image after image which in some ways is pretty boring. I'm concerned about Danbury's future, and I believe we can do better. I ask for your vote. So you can see when we went from the previous image to the image you're looking at now, that was a pretty boring transition. This is the last image in the project. It's a poignant part of the project. We want to make that impact. We want to do something different, something creative. So that being the same as every other image, isn't quite fitting. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at playing around with this final image. So like all images we highlight, we double click it so it appears in our viewer and what I'd like to do with this image is instead of it just moving from we one image to the next image I want that image to become to zoom in almost, zoom out of the previous image and get to that size. So that's going to involve changing the scale, the size of that image and also animating that image. So what we're going to do is we just highlighted it. We're going to click on the motion tab because we're playing around with the motion and you can see the first in the line is scale. If you change the scale, there you go, you can see it changes the scale. Yep, you've guessed it. We're going to go right down to zero because we want it to come from nowhere. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to move this marker up here to the very beginning of the clip, okay? And I'm, once, I'm going to push this button here. That's marked my in point or the keyframe. That's the keyframe. That first frame is what we're going to use as the keyframe, the main focal point. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move it along a little bit. And by the time I get to here, I want that image to be full size. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play around with the scale. Uh, a little bit too big. Still a little bit too big. Okay, perfect. So there I am. So all I've done, very simply, is I've created an in point, a keyframe, where, where the scale was zero, which meant that this image was small, and then I mark the point in the, in the image, in the shot, where I want that image to be at the size that it currently is. And you can see I'm marking no other parts of the project which means that once it's at that size it's going to stay at that size. So I'm now finished with this clip I'm going to push Command R to render it because we've got our red lines again okay, which is telling us it needs to be rendered. okay. And what we should see is that we're going to go from the previous clip and then out of the previous clip it's going to look like we're going to have this other clip growing to the size that we now see in the canvas screen. So it's now rendered, just to see. We have one. And I believe we can do better. I ask for your vote for a Danbury. And there you go. Now let's say you want to do something even more than that. Say you wanted to kind of like make it turn and twist. So what we're going to do is we're going to repeat the same process. We're going to double click. Click motion, because once again we're playing around with the motion. And take my marker all the way back to the very beginning of the clip. And we've still got that size. but So we're happy with that size. We're happy with it being small and growing to become big, to fill the screen. But what we want to do is we want to play around with the rotation. So here's the rotation. You can play around with that and you can spin it around. So for example, just so you can see, we're spinning it around. So... What we're going to do is we're going to go to the very beginning of the clip, 
and we're going to say, yep, yeah, that's fine. So I'm going to click this tab again. That's my keyframe. That's where our starting point. That's where we're going to start from. And I'm going to move all the way to the top. I'm just going to get there. And at that point, I want it to span, hmm, say so I want it to span once, twice. That's going to be quite quick. But I want it to be dead centered still. And there we go. Once again, I'm going to have to do Command R and render my image. But hopefully what we're now going to see is we're going to see the image become small and grow to fill the screen. But while it's doing that, we're also going to see it rotate twice. Because you saw me do this rotation twice. And if we wanted to do it three times, we would have done it three times. If we just wanted it to rotate once, we would have just rotated it once. And so here it is, finishing rendering. And we're going to watch it. And I believe we can do better. I ask for your vote for a Danbury United fortune. And as you can see, I would have thought that was maybe a little bit too quick. Maybe just one rotation would have been sufficient. And another piece of advice, perhaps try and work on all of the clip before rendering it because it does take time to render. But that's the process of playing around and manipulating the motion of an image in your project.